the topic that we shall be discussing is termed as economic value added so it is also known as eva the economic value added what is this economic value added economic value added is one of the financial performance indicators that actually does tell you that how much value addition has uh, been done for the shareholders i'll give you a brief background about the economic value added so that you could have an idea then we will discuss this in detail also and one important thing that i want you people to understand is that economic value added is one of the very important computational area of apm and you could expect the examiner to examine it either as a full fledged question or as a major part of a question or even a part of a question so you could expect economic value added to be tested on a frequent basis at apm level now the economic value added has a formula which is nopat minus vac into capital employed so when i talk about the economic value added the economic value added has a formula of nopat minus vac into capital employed now what exactly is this nopat going to be so nopat is your net operating profit after tax net operating profit after tax the vac is your weighted average cost of capital and the capital employed in simple terms the capital employed is your uh, non current liabilities plus the equity or you could say the capital employed is your total assets minus current liability so that is also another way of calculating capital employed so when i talk about the computation of capital employed these are the two different ways of calculating it either as a total assets minus current liability or you could do non current liability plus the equity that's what the capital employed is also calculated as now let's have a bit of a discussion let's talk about it if i could just put in the value to give you a bit of an idea then i'll discuss what nopat is what vac is etc so for example if your business has got a nopat for example if your business has got a nopat of $10000 and then what happens is that your vac multiplied by capital employed is going to be let's say 10% multiplied by 10% multiplied by 85000 so hence resultingly what happens is you would say $10000 minus 8500 gives you $1500 as your economic value added gives you $1500 as your economic value added so when i talk about the concept of economic value added what exactly is this economic value added it simply your nopat minus vac into capital employed now if the economic value added is positive that means value has been created if the economic value added is negative that means value has been deteriorated but if the economic value added is zero so an economic value added of zero or nil means that no addition in value and at the same time no deterioration in value also neither addition nor deterioration that's what the economic value added of zero would actually means so i repeat when we have got the economic value added there is actually a positive there is actually a negative value and there could be a zero value also so positive value means that the value has been created negative value would mean that the value has been deteriorated and the zero means the value has neither been added nor the value has been deteriorated now what is this economic value added actually suggesting to you so when you talk about the economic value added what exactly is it suggesting to you it is suggesting to you that based on whatever investment that was there based on the required rate of return the investors are demanding a return of 8500 
So this is a demanded return. And the business has actually earned 10,000. So there is an excess return that you have generated. So that means when the return is generated over and above the return desired. So that means the value has been created. That means the value has been created. Now, what is the logic of this economic value added formula? So this economic value added is one of the modified version of the residual income. We have already discussed, discussed residual income on several occasions. And we know that the concept of residual income is that all that we do is that we simply say the divisional profit less the desired return percentage multiply by investment. Now for for a long time the businesses have been using this residual income as one of the performance measure. I repeat for the long time the business has been using this residual income as a performance measure. But there are problems with the residual income and what are those problems with the residual income? The problems with the residual income is one of them is a divisional profit. Because this divisional profit is actually affected by the accounting policies. It is affected by the accounting standards. So let me guide you. These divisional profits have been affected by the accounting policies. They have been affected by the accounting standards. The way accounting standards are applicable, the way accounting policies are applicable, this could have an impact on the divisional profit that is calculated. Furthermore, it could include the non-cash income and it could include non-cash expenses also. So usually what happens is when we talk about the value creation for the shareholders, the value creation for shareholders is mainly measured using the, the cash flow based item, the cash based item. <clears throat> so if you use these accounting policy, if you use these accounting standards, so ultimately what happens is that there are these non-cash items, non-cash expenses, they are also included in it and that is actually a problematic situation. The second one of them is a desired return percentage multiplied by investment. What is it? Desired return percentage multiplied by investment. So another problem is that the desired return may not always be the same as your VAC. I repeat the desired return may not always be the same as your VAC. Like for example, your desired return may be 12%. But the VAC may be 8%. So the desired return could actually be unrealistic measure also. I repeat the desired return could actually be an unrealistic measure also. So when we talk about the concept of the residual income, you need to understand that what exactly is this residual income uh, all about. It's again calculating the residual, the additional return that's generated. But it has got its own limitation. One of them is the use of profit. And the other one of them is the use of the desired return percentage. The third one of them is also there which is about investment figure also. Uh, but generally there are, there are something good about investment figure also. But major problem lies with the divisional profit and the residual uh, and the desired return. So as a result of this, this economic value added technique was introduced. And the agenda was that it has to be close, as close to cash flows as possible. The agenda of this economic value added is it has to be as close to the cash flows as possible. That's number one thing. And the second thing is that it is going to be uh, eliminating accounting standards requirements which are unrealistic, which are possibly unrealistic. So it would actually be eliminating the accounting standards requirement which are unrealistic requirements. So what exactly are these? Let's talk and let's discuss about them. So the first thing with respect to the economic value added is, um, there is one thing that I want you people to understand a basic concept that we have studied earlier at F9 level also. 
and uh, that is something you need to understand which is when we calculate NPV when we calculate NPV the cash flows that we use the cash flows that we use we don't actually deduct the interest from it we don't deduct interest from it why is it that we don't deduct interest from it the reason being that the interest is incorporated through the VAC the interest costs are incorporated through the VAC so when the interest costs are incorporated through the VAC so resultingly what happens is that uh, the cash flows are already converted to present value so they are already discounted so they are already reduced and the effect of interest is incorporated through this discount rate so if I incorporate the interest in the cash flows also so this is actually going to be a double counting I repeat if I incorporate the interest through cash flows also that is going to be double counting so in order to avoid double counting what we do is that we ignore the interest in the cash flows because that's already incorporated through the VAC calculation now this is not something of a new concept that I have given to you people you have already studied this concept on many occasions but it says that I wanted to share this concept with you people so I have shared this concept now let's move a bit forward and let's discuss further so the same concept that you need to be keeping in mind which is that when you have got this no pat minus VAC into capital employed so the interest cost is already incorporated through this VAC percentage so this VAC percentage the interest cost is already incorporated so you don't have to incorporate the interest over here in the no pat I repeat you don't have to incorporate the interest cost here in the no pat why because it's already incorporated through the VAC calculations now let's move a bit forward and let's discuss so when we, call, when we talk about the net operating profit after tax which is also no pact let's have a discussion that what do we mean by this no pact let's have a discussion that what do we mean by no pact so the concept of no pad is actually going to be like this you would start off with what you would start off with um, there are two ways of doing it I'm just starting off with the profit after tax then you add back after tax interest to it after tax interest actually means interest expense multiply by 1 minus t why do we add it up I'll just explain to you so when you calculate no part you have got profit after tax you add up after tax interest to it then what actually happens is that whatever the non-cash expenses are you add them up I bid whatever the non-cash expenses are you add them up the accounting depreciation non-cash expenses and additionally non-capitalized expenses are also added up then what happens is the accounting depreciation is added the economic depreciation is deducted and hence what do you end up getting you end up getting no pat what do you end up getting you end up getting no pat so I repeat what actually happens is this is something that you would have to keep in mind which is the profit after tax add back after tax interest add non-cash expense, add non-capitalized expenses, 
add accounting depreciation, less economic depreciation and then you end up getting no PAT. Now what exactly are they? Let's have a discussion about them. So the first one of them is, the first one of them is after tax interest. What is the concept of that? Try to understand. I told you people that what we need to do is that we need try, we need to eliminate the effect of interest. So for example, there is a business which has a PBID of 100,000 and there is an interest of 20,000. There is a profit before tax of 80,000. There is actually a tax at the rate of 30%. So that's 24,000 and you end up getting profit after tax of you end up getting profit after tax of 56,000. So what is it? PBIT minus the interest. Then you got the PBT. You deduct tax and you have the PAT. Now if I talk about this company now and if I assume that this company has now repaid whatever interest that it had obtained. So the interest cost is going to be zero. Whatever loan that it had obtained, it has repaid. So the so the interest cost is going to be what? Zero. The profit before tax would stand at 100,000. And if I say tax at the rate of 30%, so it's actually going to be 30,000 and hence resultingly, you'd be standing at 70,000. Now see, if we try to compare the result, we would see that If we would try to compare the results, we would see that we have actually saved. We would see that we have actually saved 20,000 of interest. But we have ended up paying 6,000 of extra tax. So resultingly net saving is 14,000. Resultingly net saving is 14,000. So that means the situation with and without interest would have a net impact of 14,000. Situation with and without interest would have a net impact of 14,000. So in order to make sure, I repeat, in order to make sure that we are doing the correct calculation, what we do is that we start off with a profit after tax, which may be 56,000. And then we add up after tax interest. After tax interest is going to be 30,000 multiply 1 minus 30 percent. Sorry, it's 20,000. Multiply 1 minus 30 percent, so this actually gives you 14,000 and resultingly you would say you are standing at 70,000 which could also be termed as PBIT 1 minus T. So as I told you we need to eliminate the effect of interest, we need to eliminate the effect of interest. So in order to eliminate the effect of interest, this is the adjustment that you do. What is the adjustment that you do? You say PBIT, uh, this profit after tax less the after tax interest. After tax interest is interest multiply 1 minus t. After tax interest is interest multiply 1 minus t. That's what you do. So one of the adjustment is basically profit after tax, add back after tax interest. Next is non-cash expense, any non-cash expense like for example, you've got depreciation, you've got impairment, you've got amortization, you've got provision for bad debt, etc, etc. All of these adjustments have to be incorporated. I repeat, all of these adjustments have to be incorporated. Why? Because we, not, we need to calculate the cash flows. We need to calculate the NOPAT which is as close to cash flows as possible. Then non-capitalized expenses. Now let me guide you a bit about it. There are many expenses that IS38 does not allow you to capitalize. I repeat, there are many expenses which IS38 does not allow you to capitalize. Like for example, what are the expenses? 
that IS 38 does not allow you to capitalize like marketing expense like the expenditure on the brand development like the research expense but realistically speaking if we do discuss you would agree this thing that these expenditures do give you benefit if you're doing marketing people would remember your product for ages for years and years that's an impact maybe there could be a short-term marketing campaign that might not have an impact but if there is a generally brand building campaign that has an impact on the people's minds and brains so it's illogical to expense it out so the proponents the people who advocated this economic value added they suggested that look the economic value added requires uh, if you want to actually calculate the economic if you want to calculate economic value added you got to make sure I repeat what do you need to do you got to make sure that you you add back those expenses which you have which you have expensed out just because of the accounting standards requirement because accounting standards don't always make sense we are talking about management accounting we are not talking about financial reporting then whatever the accounting depreciation is that needs to be added up what do you mean by accounting depreciation now a very important thing accounting debris added back and the economic depreciation deducted I want you people to understand this concept because this is a very very important concept and uh, and, and and you will you will actually realize that there was a very big and uh, there was a very big concept which you may not have studied till the whole of your life till now so what is that going to be <coughs> what is that going to be try to understand there are two different lives one of them is termed as useful life the other one of them is termed as economic life I repeat there are two different types of lives one of them is a useful life the other one of them is termed as an economic life useful life and the economic life the difference is maximum period and asset could provide benefit the maximum period for which the asset could provide benefit is termed as economic life and what's a useful life the period over which an entity intends to obtain benefit of asset the period over which an entity intends to obtain the benefit of the asset so like for example what do you mean by this useful life what do you mean by the economic life try to understand the useful life is going to be what the useful life is let's say if the asset could be used for 10 years its economic life and if the asset you want to use it for four years only because the companies they've got a policy that's called useful life so in accounting we depreciate the asset over useful life the proponents of economic value added suggested that look if you have bought an asset for 100,000 you depreciate it by $25,000 every year but realistically speaking the economic depreciation of that asset is gonna be what 100,000 divided by 10 so this actually gives you 10,000 the economic depreciation has to be 10,000 it should not be 25,000 so when we talk about this adjustment the accounting depreciation of let's say 25,000 is to be added up and the realistic depreciation of economic depreciation is to be deducted that's what the concept of this specific uh, addition, adjustment is so when it comes to when it comes to the computation of NOPAT this is how we do it which is profit after tax add back after tax interest add non-cash expense, add non-capitalized expenses, 
accounting debris and added up, economic debris and deducted, and then no pad is achieved. Next part of the calculation is the capital employed. The next part of the calculation is capital employed. There are few things with respect to the capital employed that I want you people to understand. What are those things with respect to capital employed? Let's have a bit of a discussion. Basically what happens is, um, the capital employed is normally termed as total assets minus current liability or you could also calculate it as non-current liability plus equity. Now, so basically what happens is when it comes to the economic value added, we use the capital employed but not just the capital employed, we use adjusted capital employed. What do we use? We use adjusted capital employed. Now what do we mean by adjusted capital employed? So one thing is we use adjusted capital employed and that to opening adjusted capital employed. So what is it that we do? We use adjusted opening capital employed. Adjusted opening capital employed is what we use. Now try to understand this thing. For example, for example, you have a year ended 31st December 2021. This is your year end. So what happens is the no pat is going to be calculated for this period 31st December 2021. But the capital employed that you would be using, the capital employed that would you be that you would be using would be at 31st December 2020 or other way around if you want to understand more it's a 1st January 2021 so you see you got to use the opening capital employed I bet you got to use the opening capital employed what is it opening capital employed is what you got to use so it either has to be 31st December 2020 or 1st January 2021 that's what you have to use Now let's move a bit forward. So what you are going to do is that you have to actually use opening capital employed and you have to adjust that opening capital employed in line with the adjustments that you have made for no pat. So what is it going to be? You would say capital employed as per SOFP. What are you going to do? You're going to say capital employed as per SOFP and then adjustments. What adjustments are going to be? The reason for adjusting the capital employed is that we have adjusted no part. The comparison is always going to be like with like. We have adjusted this no part for many things. So those things should be reflected in the capital employed also because you see ultimately capital employed is made up of equity. Equity is made up of profit and capital. So if your profits have been adjusted, the capital employed should also be adjusted. So how do we incorporate these adjustments? Try to understand. You've got capital employed as per SOFP and then what you do is that you say accounting depreciation to date now what is this to date to date is the date till which you are adjusting capital like for example if you are adjusting capital up till 1st January 2021 so this accounting depreciation has to be up till 1st January 2021 accounting depreciation to date then you would have economic depreciation Again to date. 
which is 1st January 2021. She will add up accounting debris. Why? Because it has always been deducted. So you add it up. You add up to the capital. And then you deduct whatever the economic debris is. Then what you do is that the non-cash expenses to date is what you do. Add up. Non-capitalized expenses to date is what you add up. Why? Because again the adjustments are being made to bring this capital employed in line with the no pact. The adjustments are being made to bring this capital employed in line with no pact. Then there is going to be last adjustment which is about non-capitalized leases. Now there is something that I want to that, that I want you to understand with respect to it is that this treatment is changed a bit after the introduction of IFRS 16 leases. But again, to give you an idea, if you have got an asset under operating lease, although it's or, or, or let's say a short term lease, although that asset is not reflected in your balance sheet, but still you are benefiting of that benefiting out of that asset. You are still gaining benefit out of that asset. So what is it that you need to do? You need to add up, you need to establish the fair value of that asset, whatever the fair value. And you need to add it up. So resultingly you would have the capital employed. Resultingly what would you have? You would have the capital employed. So basically the capital employed is being established using the adjustments just like the adjustments are being done for the calculation of the NOPAT. The similar type of adjustments are being made here. Lastly, there is this VAC calculation and uh, you would remember this VAC. So I could just write down KE multiplied by E upon E plus D plus KD 1 minus T multiplied by D upon E plus D. So what do you have? You have got KE as cost of equity you are not expected to do the calculations that you are expected to do at F9 they would probably be giving you KE yes from the given data you may be required to calculate VAC capital E is market value of equity capital D is market value of debt you have got KD which is the cost of debt and you have got KD 1 minus T which is after tax cost of debt. So that is what it is. I bet mean, that is what it is. So if you want to calculate the VAC, this is how you do it. So basically, we use all these adjustments to calculate EVA. And I have told you earlier, if it's a positive value, then we say that value has been created. It's, it's a negative value, we say value has been deteriorated. We have in front of us this one of the questions, the name of which is Gamma Group. Um, what do we need to do? We need to actually calculate the economic value added for the two years, which is 2006 and for 2007. And we need to comment briefly on the performance of the group. So what are we going to do? We are going to calculate the economic value added for this business using the data which is available so that we have a good application of the EVA concept. Um, it says 2006, 2007, the revenue of 400, 450, okay, the profit before tax is given, income tax expense is given, profit for the period, dividends, retain nothing. So this profit for the period would actually be profit after tax. You've got balance sheets for 2006, 2007, uh, the non-current assets are being given, the current assets, total financing, so on and so forth. It says capital employed at the end of 2005 amounted to 279 million. 
what I can easily do for my own uh, ease is that I could do capital employed and I could do no pad calculation side by side. I repeat I could do the capital employed and I could do the no pad calculation side by side. What actually happens is that you would say this is profit after tax. This is for 2006, this is for 2007, this is for 6, this is for 7. So the capital employed as per SOFP is 279. Remember, when we talk about 2006, that means we are talking about 2005 balance. When we talk about 2007, that means we are talking about 2006 balance. That is what we do with respect to capital employed. The Gamma group had non-capitalized leases. What do we mean by non-capitalized leases? If you could remember, it's just like an operating lease or you could say short-term lease. So what does it say? It says the Gamma Group has non-capitalized leases valued at 16 million at the end of each of the year 2005 to 2007. But before that, what am I going to do? I'm just mentioning the profit after tax figures. The profit after tax figures are 67 and 82 over here. Then what actually happens is that I would say after tax interest. We'll just see what is the after tax interest. There is this non capitalized leases. So the value of non-capitalized leases that is available to us is that at the end of 2005, 2006, 2007 it was 16 million each. 16 million, 16 million. That is what you are going to add. Amortization of the goodwill amounted to 5 million per year both in 2006 and both in 2007. Amortization of goodwill, this is 5 and this is 5. Now what next is there, it says the amount of goodwill written off against reserves on acquisition in years prior to 2006 amounted to 45 million. Now what we are going to do is that we are going to say this is 45 and this is 50. Why? 45 previously and then 5 million for the current year, that's what the adjustment is going to be. The group's pre-tax cost is this, this, this. Okay, so we have got the rate of taxation also. And although there is no interest available, so we just need to go about it like this. Economic depreciation amounted to 40 million and 6 and 45 million and 7. These amounts were equal to debris and use for tax purpose and debris and charge in income statement. So what happens is the accounting depreciation and the economic depreciation would be the same. So there is actually going to be no change in this. Uh, if you just want to add it up, you can do it. Even if you have not mentioned it, it would have also been okay. Even if you would have not mentioned them, it would have also been okay. Next is that it says interest payable amounted to 6 million in both 6 and 7. So we've got the after tax interest, which is 6 into. 1 minus 30 percent 4.2 so it's actually gonna be 4.2 4.2 then what actually happens is
Then what actually happens is other non-cash expenses amounted to 12 million per year in 6 and 7. Non-cash expenses amounted to 12 million in both the years because it did not exist in 2005. So we are over here doing the working for 2005. So hence resultingly what have we done? We have done the calculation for the no part and we have done the calculation for uh, the capital employed but there is one thing which is missing uh, which is we need to incorporate this value also. So we need to have 2006 closing capital this is 340. So it mentioned 340 over here. Now if I could just zoom out this whole calculation so that you could have a good idea that what am I up to? So the whole of the calculation is going to be like this. Okay, this is gonna be 340. This is gonna be, mm -hmm, no, no, there is something wrong. 340 plus 16 plus 50 plus 12 gives you 418 then you have got the no pat 67 plus 4.2 plus 5 plus 40 minus 40 plus 12 gives you 88.2 And this is this is 103.2. So what have we got? We have got the values of no pat. We have got the values of capital employed. We have got these values now. If I could just zoom it back in again. So we have these values. Now, what is it that we need to do? we need to do the workings for the VAC when we need to do the working for the VAC how exactly is it going to be done so this is relevant this A is relevant this is relevant and this is relevant okay now see we'll assume that the capital structure the target capital structure would prevail so 2006 it's gonna be 16% into 50% plus the cost of debt which is 10% multiply by 1 minus tax multiply by 50% and then for 2007 it has to be 18% into 50% plus 10% into 1 minus 0.3 multiply by 50% if I try to calculate the VAC what am I gonna get? Eleven point five percent and twelve point five percent. These are what the VAC are. The VACs are available, which is eleven point five and twelve point five percent. Now, what is it? What that we need to do now? The next thing is. We now need to calculate the economic value added. So for 2006, for 2007. What's your no pat? 88.2 minus 11.5% multiply by 340. And then 103.2 minus 12.5% into 418. So resultingly what do we get? Forty nine point one million is the economic value added for two thousand six. And 
एंड फिफ्टी पॉइंट नाइन फाइव इज द वैल्यू फॉर टू थाउजेंड एंड सेवन ना वॉट इज इट इंडिकेटिंग वॉट इज इट सजेस्टिंग दिस इज इंडिकेटिंग दिस इज सजेस्टिंग टू आस दैट दिस इज इंडिकेटिंग दिस इज सजेस्टिंग टू आस दैट बोथ इन टू थाउजेंड सिक्स बोथ इन टू थाउजेंड एंड सेवन वैल्यू इज क्रिएटेड आई एंड टू थाउजेंड सेवन देर इज ग्रेटर वैल्यू क्रिएटेड इन टू थाउजेंड सेवन देर इज ग्रेटर वैल्यू क्रिएटेड दैट इज वॉट द रिजल्ट इज रिफ्लेक्टिंग दैट इज वॉट द रिजल्ट इज सजेस्टिंग टू अस दैट ग्रेटर वैल्यू इज क्रिएटेड इन टू थाउजेंड एंड सेवन so for 2007 there is greater value that has been created so what we have done is we have actually gone through this question the name of which was gamma group and we have actually calculated the economic value added for this specific question and the comment was required that is uh, you need to comment so the comment is both the years the value has been created in one year more value was created in another year the lesser value was created this is one of the examination question um, on the economic value added the name of this question is still water services it says still water is a listed utility company providing water and sewage and sewage services to the public and businesses of a region of tealand the company was formed when the government owned public water company of tealand was broken up into regional utility companies one of which was ss and sold into private ownership over 4 years ago so we do know with respect to the still water services that what is this still water services all about it's actually a listed utility company which has been providing the water and sewage services etc etc now there are actually two parts to this question one of the part is evaluate the performance of ss using the economic value added that's one part and there is another part which i am not going to be considering right now because my focus is upon calculation of economic value added now for me to calculate the economic value added you know this thing that the economic value added is calculated like this you have got no pat minus vac multiply by the capital employed there is no pat minus vac into capital employed so if i talk about the no pat i'll talk about capital employed also in this specific scenario now it says the finance director has asked you to calculate eva for the company based on the following finance information for the year ended 30th september 2012 so what is it that you are going to do it says still water services there is this regulated there is this non regulated information and then there is total information revenue is being given operating cost operating profit financial charges means interest profit before tax tax profit after tax and then you have got capital employed etc etc measured from public accounts measured by regulators so on and so forth mm. now it says total operating cost include total operating cost include what depreciation in 2012 is given 2011 gives provision for doubtful debt r&d other non cash items economic depreciation is assessed to be 83 million in 2012 and it includes any appropriate amortization adjustments also in previous years it can be assumed that economic and accounting depreciation were the same so we are being told that for the previous year you can assume that the economic and the accounting depreciation are the same it says tax is the cash paid in the current year which is 9 million 
and an adjustment of 0.5 million for deferred tax. We are going to be talking about that also. Provision for doubtful debt was 4.5 million on 2012 balance sheet. So 2012 balance sheet would actually means it's actually a closing provision for debt. Then R&D is not capitalized in the accounts. I repeat, the R&D is not capitalized in the accounts. It relates to new project that will be developed over five years and is expected to be of long term benefit to the company. 2012 is the first year of this project. Cost of capital for the equity is this, debt for this, gearing is this and this. Now I'll do the easy thing first which is to calculate the weighted average cost of capital for this question. So I'll actually be assuming that, okay this is the gearing already. So what we have is the tax rate given somewhere because it's a pre-tax rate. So yes the tax rate is 25%. So I would say VAC is equivalent to cost of equity. Hence, resultingly what happens is you have got the KE which is 16% multiplied by the equity is 40% plus KD which is 5% multiplied by 25% 1 minus T which is 25% tax rate multiplied by 60% which is the debt. So hence resultingly what would happen is you will have the VAC. Hence the VAC is going to be 8.65%. I bet the VAC is going to be 8.65%. What is it? It's going to be 8.65%. That's what the VAC is going to be. Now let's move a bit forward and let's discuss further. The revenue is given, operating cost is given, operating profit is given, finance charges is given, profit before tax, then tax at the rate of 25% and so on and so forth. The profit after tax is 35.5. What I'll do is that I will actually start off with this uh, 35 point, this uh, profit after tax of 35.5. You'd say, Add back after tax interest to it. There is an interest of 23. So hence resultingly what happens is. seven point two seventeen point two five is going to be the after tax interest. I bet 17.25 is going to be after tax interest. Now, what else is there? It says the depreciation during the current year is 59. I'll write down the capital employed also. You do know that the opening capital employed is going to be taken. So as at 30th September 2011 at 637. Then what actually happens is we have got this depreciation of 59. The provision for bed debt of 2. The research and development which is actually of 12. The other non-cash items which are actually going to be of 7.
it says economic depreciation is assessed to be 83 economic depreciation is assessed to be 83 economic depreciation includes any appropriate amortization adjustments etc etc in previous years it can be assumed economic and accounting depreciation were the same so that means there is going to be no adjustment for the accounting depreciation and the economic depreciation because it was assumed to be the same for the previous years it says tax is the cash paid in the current year 9 and an adjustment of 0.5 million for deferred tax provision so deferred tax is a non-cash item so 0.5 is to be added up the provision for doubtful debt was 4.5 what you need to do with respect to this doubtful debt is that provision for bad debt opening is not known closing is known 4.5 the expense is known which is 2 so it's actually gonna be 2.5 what is it gonna be 2.5 so hence the provision for bad debt that was existing previously was 2.5 because you need to calculate the capital employed as at the start of the year further it says R&D is not capitalized in the account it relates to new project developed over 5 years expected to be of long term benefit to the company 2012 is the first year of the project so if this is the first year of the project it's actually gonna be like this it's actually gonna be like this 639.5 so if I try to calculate the adjustments over here I could just see that no further adjustment required so resultingly what happens is we need to have this calculation now so it actually turns out to be what 35.5 plus 17.25 plus 59 plus 2 plus 12 plus 7 minus 83 plus 0.5 so that is actually gonna be 50.25 50.25 now the economic value added is going to be what 50.25 minus the VAC which is 8.65 percent into 60.25 so resultingly what happens is sorry not 60 but it's 639.5 639.5 into 8.65 percent so hence negative 5 million is what you are getting that means the economic value added in this scenario is a negative economic value added. what is it it's actually a negative economic value added that we have established what negative 5 million is what the economic value added is all about in this so this question you had the EVA to be no pad minus back into capital employed to be negative 5 So what have we done we have actually gone through this question which is about the economic value added calculation I have not gone through another part of the question because my agenda right now is to go through the economic value added to the max.